whatever setting you're in in your life right now, whether it's being at work or being at school or being on a sports team, we all know a person, maybe a few people that stand out from the rest. We all know people that stand out in competition in any type of sports league that we watch. There's always that one player that stands out from the rest. Same with a sales team. There's always that one person that stands out from the rest of the organization. What makes them stand out? Are you able to stand out like this? If so, how? How do you stand out from the competition? Let's get into it. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Leave Your Mark podcast. As always, I am your host, Miguel Mendoza. And this is the podcast created to help your legacy. We have reached episode 84, fired up to be here, grateful for every chance we get to put out an episode. This is a this is just a dream of mine, right? I'm, I'm living my dream. This is a, just the best time ever being able to speak to you all. I love hearing your feedback on social media. And if you're not following me on social media, just look up at leave your underscore mark on pretty much everything. And I'd love to hear your feedback. Email me, Miguel at leaveyourmark.pro. I have a big spot in my heart for all of you who have, have are listening to this, are subscribed to me, are following me. Much love for all of you. Now, what makes you stand out? Okay, so what is standing out? Standing out is being different in a great way. Like without you having to say anything, somebody should know you are different. But what makes you different? How do we do that? Okay, we're going to go over six things. There's believing in yourself, preparation, your response to pressure, learning from everything, every opportunity. Number five, desire to be the best. And number six, accept not being liked. Make sure you hear all of these. So listen through the whole episode. Really, really good stuff. So the first one, those who stand out from the competition, they believe in themselves wholeheartedly. They believe that they're the ones. They believe that they're that guy. They believe that they're that girl. Out of the 20 people close to you, how many of those need to believe in you? Zero. You are the only one that needs to believe in yourself. You're the only one that needs to believe that you're smart. You're the only one that needs to believe that you're charming. You're the only one that needs to believe in your abilities and your potential. And you are the only one that has to believe that you are chosen. You can tell when somebody truly believes that they're chosen. They live their life like someone who's chosen. They carry themselves like someone who's chosen. It's what brings that confidence that's respected by so many. And the only ones who don't respect this type of person who believes in themselves, who is confident, who believes that they're chosen, the only people who have a problem with them are the people who have a problem with themselves. They have inner things that they need to work on. Internal issues with themselves, lack of self-love, lack of self-respect, a poor self-image. Because if somebody has their, their self-love and self-image to a, to a peak high, completely filled up with themselves... They don't have any sort of jealousy or envy for anybody. They're not comparing themselves to anybody else because they believe that they have the stuff. So they're going to look at other people, other top competitors, and be like, man, good for you. Good on you. Good stuff. Keep it up. You have to believe that you're the one. You have to believe that you stand out, that you're the top dog. And you know what's interesting about believe, about even just the word believe in the middle, in the exact middle of the word believe is lie. L-I-E is right in the middle of believe. So that leads me to believe that you have to lie to yourself about certain things until you believe. Then it will be true. So what do I mean by lie to yourself? I, I mean you put yourself in front of a mirror. And you say positive words of affirmation to yourself. You lie to yourself. If you are not very charming, you lie to yourself. I am charming. I am a hard worker. I'm charismatic. I'm disciplined. I'm consistent. I never allow people's opinions to get me down. I'm completely filled up with self-love. I love myself. I'm incredible. I'm amazing. I'm chosen. 
If you say these things enough, beginning of your day, end of your day, maybe even middle of your day, you will begin to believe it. Okay, this is proven. It's called the subconscious mind. You feed that thing enough things over time, your brain will just completely adapt to it and adopt that mindset. Adopt those lies that you're telling yourself. That's why it's very important to be careful what you say to yourself. So if you call yourself ugly, you call yourself pathetic, worthless, well, I'm sorry, but you're right. Or at least you're going to be right. So remember, carry yourself like somebody who believes in themselves. Number two is preparation. Okay, this part should be crystal clear to everyone. Everyone should be able to look at your life and tell that you stand out because of how you prepare. You're the one that's there the earliest. You're the one that's focused on your work. You're not gossiping with everybody else. And after work, you're not hanging out, going to the bars with everybody. You're either staying late or you're going home to work more on your craft or to take care of your family. And then once you put the kids to bed, do a little bit of extra work, even if it's just reading, feeding your mind, you're obsessed. You put in overtime, even if you're not getting paid for it. Now, most people can't subscribe to that mindset because you just feel like you're being controlled and you're you're just going to be somebody's puppet and somebody's worker. Like, look, It may look like that, but ultimately, let's just say you're working for somebody and you have this obsessed preparation. You're going to build yourself a name. You're going to build yourself some money. You're going to build yourself some credibility. And then you go off and you start your own business or you go off to work even higher at a different company. It's not about being somebody's slave. Okay. That's not what extreme preparation is. Preparation is what builds you to be set free. All everybody else is working the nine to five slavery, living for the weekends, living for comfort. The best part of their life is what's new on Netflix. That's slavery. Stand out from your preparation. When they're partying, you're working. When they're sleeping, you're working. When they're watching TV, you're working. When they're scrolling on their phones all night, you are working. A great example of this is Mr. Beast. Uh, His name's Jimmy. But he started a YouTube channel. He was really one of the first ones ever to become insanely rich from their YouTube channel. And I was watching an interview of his, and he said, I was obsessed with it. And I I put myself around other people who were obsessed. And this is all we did from day to night is we worked on how to make the right YouTube videos, how to make certain adjustments. What adjustments do we need to make? We weren't partying, we weren't drinking, we weren't even dating. We were all just locked in and obsessed. And look at their results. They were obsessed, and now they're free. You're not free. Those who are completely opposed to this mindset, you're not free. He's free. People like him are free. So who's really the slave? I believe it's really just your excuse to being lazy and abiding to your comfort rather than doing what you need to do to get the things that you want to get in this life. And, you know, this this mindset overall about, you know, when they're doing this, you're doing the opposite. It sounds super cliche, and, and again, it may sound toxic to you, but how do you expect to be a king? How do you expect to be a queen when you're living like a peasant? There's only one spot for the throne. And you're not going to get it by doing what everybody else is doing. You're not going to get it by living like peasants. You're not going to get it by being lazy and then blaming other people or other things or other events in your life for the reasons why you didn't go up and claim that throne. You're not going to get it by doing what everybody else is doing. Do not join the 99% of people who feel entitled to the title. There are no participation awards, okay? And if if you believe in that mindset, you're never going to be the best that you can be. Because, look, I get it. Some of you are saying, but there's plenty of room at the top. There's there's plenty of seats for what I want to do for my career path. And, look, that's fine, and you're probably right. But I'm talking about the mindset. You have to have the mindset to want to be 
in that number one spot. And we'll talk more about that specifically later. But just know there are no participation awards. You either have that top dog mentality or you do not. And we're so excuse filled. It's, it's just become our culture. Like when I talk about waking up early with people, I hear a lot of the times, oh, I'm not a morning person. And you may say that you're not a morning person. But let me ask you this. If you woke up to a fire at four o'clock in the morning, I promise you your butt would get up and get out. That just lets you know it's all in your mind. It's just that most people need that external motivation to get them up and out of bed. But really, you got to have that fire in your heart to get you up and out every single day to work on your dreams, to work on your goals, to fulfill your true life's vision. That's how you stand out. Prepare, 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 be obsessed, and put in overtime. Number three, the third way of how to stand out from the competition is your response to pressure. How do you respond to high-pressured situations? When stuff hits the fan, when things fall apart, how do you respond? Everybody freaks out, but you should be focused on the solution. If there is a robbery, everybody's freaking out and ducking, but you need to be poised and figure out what to do. I'm not saying you go up and try to take the gun away from the guy, but you need to be poised. You don't need to freak out. When there's a sudden financial loss in your family or in your personal life or in your business, how do you respond? When there's a work accident or an a accident at home or some sort of tragedy, how do you respond? Those who stand out from the competition you play these scenarios over in your mind of if this happened, then I would do this. You even prepare for it. That's why a lot of us work out. Yes, we want to be healthy physically and mentally, but also I want to be able to pick up my kid and get us out of trouble. So you've prepared so much for tragedy, you respond off instinct. And this is what takes you from the mentality of, oh, this is too much. I can't handle the pressure to... I was built for this. I was made for this. I was designed for this. I don't feel the pressure. The pressure has to feel me. I don't need to deal with the pressure. The pressure has to deal with me. I'm that guy. This is how you stand out from the competition. Look at any great top tier athlete, any great business person. They all know how to deal with pressure. In fact, they love it. They encourage it. It's not even fun if there's no pressure. It's all in the mind. You can adopt this mindset as well. And to get to the most peak level of this, you have to be okay with dying. Because if you accept that you could die any given moment, so you freaking out changes nothing, there is nothing else in your life to fear. Think about it. In in any sort of competition, in any sort of battle, any sort of war, it's the ones who are willing to die that come out on top. Because there's nothing they're scared of. There's nothing they wouldn't do to win. How do you respond to pressure? Remember, the same pressure that fills up a balloon is the same pressure that pops the balloon. How do you take on pressure? Is it going to destroy you? Or is that what makes you take off? Okay, I got that pressure. Let's go. It's time to go. It's time to shine. It's time to do what I do. I was made for this. I was built for this. Which one do you want? Which mindset? We know which one stands out from the rest. Number four, people who stand out from the competition learn from everything. They learn from every situation. They learn from every opportunity. They learn from every win. They learn from every loss because unfortunate things happen every single day. But what's mostly unfortunate is that we don't learn from these things, is that we don't take these things and try to grow from it. Whether it's things that we did or things that other people did, we completely bypass learning opportunities. And yes, learn from your own mistakes. Really do your best to never make the same mistake twice. That's how you really know you learn from your mistakes. I mean, my biggest teacher and mentor growing up was my failures, was my slip-ups, was my mistakes. But the goal should always be to learn from it. Never make the same mistake twice. And here's a great quote for you. A fool 
learns from their own mistakes, but a wise person learns from the mistakes of others. You know, I've been getting a lot of great feedback from how I raised my son and how he's turning out. He's a great little boy, but my childhood was nothing like that. It was, it was quite a mess. And I never read any parenting books, never went to any parenting seminars. How did I learn to win in parenting from other people's mistakes? I looked back on my life and I was like, man, what went wrong? What could have gone better? What do I do? What do I not do? What do I take from what I learned as a child from the people who raised me? And what do I leave behind? That's all I did. I learned from other people's mistakes. And that's also how I learned to be a great employee. No matter where I worked, a huge, great company or a fast food restaurant, I looked around and looked at what other people did wrong. I looked at what managers hated that certain other coworkers did. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to be late because that pisses them off. I'm not going to make excuses. I'm not going to ignore correction from a manager. I'm going to take it, whether it was my fault or not. I'm not going to say the dreaded words I know when someone tries to explain something to me. I'm going to be on point from your mistakes. And that's how I learned to be a successful business owner is while I was an employee at these places, I looked at management. I looked at ownership. And I learned from their mistakes. A lot of great things I've learned, okay? I've worked for some really, really great companies with great leadership, great management, great ownership, but I learned from their mistakes. Mistakes on how managers treated their employees, on how the people at the top treated managers. I learned a lot about leadership, bad leadership. Learn from other people's mistakes. And that's how I've Learn to have a successful podcast and a very up and coming speaking career is I learn from the mistakes of others. I just did my own research, what works, what does not work. There's videos on YouTube about everything. 10 things I wish I would have known before I started a podcast, watched it. Okay, cool. I won't do those 10 things. And maybe I did do them, but just in a different way. Same thing with speaking. I learned so much from the internet, so much from reading books. It's like, I don't have to learn from my failures. In fact, like if, if I have too many failures that I try to learn from, no one's going to want to hire me. Like, no, this guy makes too, too many mistakes. So don't be afraid to fail. Definitely learn from those failures, but don't rely on your failures all the time. It shouldn't be so many failures where you completely learn everything from it. Because you're going to burn some bridges. You're going to build a bad reputation for yourself. Learn from other people's mistakes. Number five, people who stand out from the competition have the desire to be the best. Okay, this kind of ties in with preparation, but this just goes more into the mindset, desire, and the heart to be the best. Right? We talked about being a king and a queen. There's only one spot on that throne. Those who stand out from the competition, they have the desire to be the best performer, to be the hardest worker, to be in the top of sales, to be the best player in the league, to have the most sales in company history, to break records. Whatever their field is, they want to be the best. It doesn't matter if you're my friend. I want to be better than you. That doesn't mean I'm not going to help you. It doesn't mean I'm going to try to do my best to help you and and tell you what I have and how I got what I have. I always do that, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to be the best. I'll help you with whatever you need, but you're never going to outwork me. You're never going to have a bigger vision than I do. You're never going to have the, the courage that I have to dream the dreams that I have. You're not me. You don't have what I have. You're never going to be me. I'm one of one. That's the mindset you have to have if you want to stand out. It cannot be the, no, let's all win, you guys. Yeah, well, you know, I I don't want to make people feel bad by how hard I'm working or how much more sales I have than them. No, you're not doing anybody any favors with that mindset. 
Because then you're all going to be mediocre or broke or poor or low character, low mindset. No one wins that way. Someone's got to be the top dog so you can know the way, go the way, and then show the way. You got to have the mentality that says, I'm going to get what's mine, and y'all can have whatever's left on the plate. Kobe Bryant, legend who will always live forever in this world. May he rest in peace. He had the desire to be the best. A lot of people call him not a team player. Never, never would pass the ball a whole lot. He's selfish. No, he wanted to win. He wanted to be the best. And if passing you the ball means that you guys can win, that's what he's going to do. But most of the time, that's not what it took to win because nobody worked harder than him. He said that why would he pass you the ball when you have not put in the work that he has, when you're at the clubs on the weekends while he's working, and you have the audacity to be on the same court with him asking for his ball? Absolutely not. He prepares to be the best. He has the desire to be the best. And that's exactly what he was when he played. He was the best. And it, it showed in his championships in his pedigree, in his skill set, in the shows that he put on every single night, you have to have the desire to be the best. Last thing, number six, those who stand out from the competition accept that they're not going to be liked by everybody. They actually don't care. You have to develop the mindset that what people say about you is none of your business. It is irrelevant. People's opinions are not going to pay your bills. So why should you pay people's opinions any attention? No matter what you do, no matter who you are, whether you're a drug dealer or whether you're the president or whether you're a preacher or whether you're an everyday mom, somebody is not going to like you. Maybe many people are not going to like you. So if you live this life trying to get everybody to like you, you're going to live a very limited, cautious life. But in the end, you're going to look back and be like, people still didn't like me. So I really just should have gone after everything I wanted to do in my life unapologetically. Because that's what the people who stand out do. They're going to be great. They're going to put in the work. They're going to do what most aren't doing, regardless of how the people feel, unapologetically. They're going to be who they are, get what they need to get, go through the places that they need to go through. They're going to climb to the top. People will give you roses just to try to hide the weeds that are in their garden. The most kindest people will say the nastiest things behind your back. The people who you think that you can trust, the people who you think love you and like you, they could very well say the nastiest things about you and despise you, want to see you fall, want to see you crumble. So stop looking for validation. Stop looking for people to like you, for people to approve of all of your decisions and your desires because it's never going to happen. Whether you're a complete failure or a complete success, there will be people who do not like you. So stop wasting your time trying to change people's minds and change people's hearts about you. It ain't going to happen. Be about your purpose. But Miguel, how do I get to that point of not caring what people say about me or not caring if people like me? You have to like yourself, bro. You have to love yourself. And I don't mean just, you know, oh, I'm going to go get my nails done and post on Instagram self-care. No, I mean you are genuinely fulfilled. There is nothing more. There is no one else you need in your life to be happy, to feel fulfilled. And when you get to this level and people say, I don't like you, you say, that's okay. I like me. In fact, I like myself enough for you and me and them and her and him and all your cousins, everybody. I love myself enough for all of us. So that's, that's quite all right. Don't you worry about that. When you have that mindset, you're unstoppable. 
I believe in myself enough for all of us. I love myself enough for all of us. I value myself enough for all of us. I see greatness in myself for all of us. I don't need you to see it for me. I don't need you to love me. I don't need you to like me. I got me. I got me. It's all good. So these are the six ways that you will 100% for sure stand out from the competition, stand out from everybody else in life. Believe in yourself. Your preparation must be elite. Your response to pressure must be elite. You must learn from every situation. You have to have the desire to be the best, and you have to accept not being liked. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend. That's all I ask, okay? I don't want your money. I don't want none of that. Just share it with a friend who you want to get better in life. Share it with a friend who you think is in a low time in their life, a low moment, a low phase, a low chapter in their book. Bring them to this podcast. And be sure to tune in to Thursday's episode. It is with my good friend, Felipe Simplicio. He is a pro jiu-jitsu black belt. Great story. Came here to the U.S. from Brazil with 100 bucks in his back pocket and became a pro fighter and is now a coach for jiu-jitsu. He's doing amazing. He's crushing it. He's cr- crushing it on social media. Just look him up, Felipe Simplicio, S-I-M-P-L-I-C-I-O. And be sure to tune into that episode Thursday. All right, y'all. Love you.